Hi, welcome back to Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in the next couple or a few videos, we're going to be talking about glycolysis. And in the previous video, I went over the basics of glycolysis, not anything related to these structures, the enzymes, anything like that, what the purpose of it is, where it occurs, everything of that nature. In the next two videos, we're going to go over the two main phases of glycolysis. And we're, instead of looking at this from, you know, a strict organic perspective or energy or, you know, thermodynamics, all that stuff that makes things confusing, we're just going to look at this from a structural and, and very logical visual um, way so that hopefully this will make sense, all right? So there's some things I've left out, but the, 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 the basics that you would need to know for any biochemistry course about the pathway, we're going to go over in these next two videos. Like I said in the previous video, the two main parts of glycolysis are generally called, number one, the preparatory or investment phase, and the second part is the payoff phase. And we'll talk about why they're called that as we go through the video. And then we have some review questions at the very end of each video. All right. So the first thing I want to do is say what we start out with. What is the main purpose of glycolysis? Generally, what people have told you in the past is glycolysis is a metabolic pathway that basically takes glucose, or a six-carbon sugar, and breaks it down into two three-carbon fragments. All right. So in general, we're going to look at this with respect to glucose. There are some other ones that can be broken down by glycolysis, but let's focus on glucose because that's the main idea. And this is, the, this is the cyclic structure of glucose. All right, first enzyme, step one, hexokinase. All right, hexo, what does that mean? Hexo usually refers to a six-carbon sugar. All right, a hexose is a six-carbon sugar. Glucose is a six-carbon sugar. What's a kinase from what we've talked about before? A kinase is an enzyme that uses ATP to add a phosphate group to some molecule. So hexokinase should add a phosphate to glucose, because that's the hexose here. So the phosphate donor is this ATP, and it's going to transfer a phosphate specifically onto this position right there. It's going to replace that hydrogen with a phosphate, and that we see right here. Here you see the whole phosphate group right here. Okay. Now if you remember back to your numbering system, this is carbon-6 on glucose, so we just call it glucose-6 phosphate. Okay. Sometimes they'll abbreviate that as GLC-6P, glucose 6-phosphate. All we did is we transferred a phosphate from ATP to that oxygen right there on glucose. And when we transfer the phosphate, we, we get out an ADP. Okay? Now this step right here is a little confusing. Okay? This is glucose 6-phosphate right here. This molecule that you see here is actually fructose 6-phosphate. So how do we go from glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate? Well, glucose and fructose are isomers of each other. They're isomers. They're actually constitutional isomers. They're the same number and type of atoms. So literally what this enzyme does is it's going to isomerize glucose into fructose along with the phosphate that's on there. Okay, And it's going to ultimately do that through use of this carbon right here, which happens to be the anomeric carbon, a very reactive carbon. And it's going to take this six-membered ring into a five-membered ring, which is fructose. Okay. Key things to understand here, this position right over here, that's the six-phosphate. Okay. And one other, one other thing I want to note for the next step, this is position one right there. That is position one on fructose. Okay. So it literally takes the six-membered glucose 6-phosphate and turns it into the five-membered ring fructose 6-phosphate. Again, if you count the number of carbons on each of these first three molecules, it's still six. They're all six carbons. Okay. Next enzyme, next step, phosphofructokinase 1, typically abbreviated as PFK1. We'll talk more about this enzyme in other videos, but suffice to say it's the rate-limiting step of glycolysis. It's also the main regulatory point of glycolysis. Okay. We already have a phosphate on the 6th position. Why do you think I said this is the 1 position? Well, it's a kinase, so it's going to phosphorylate something. It's going to phosphorylate a phosphofructo molecule, which is handy because this is a phosphofructo molecule. It's fructose 6-phosphate. 
So we're going to phosphorylate it at the 1 position. And that's what you see right here. You now see not only do we have a phosphate still on the 6 position, oops, but we also now have one on the 1 position. Okay? So now instead of being fructose 6-phosphate, this one is termed fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Now there's two phosphates, one on the 1 and 6 positions. Okay? Where do you think that phosphate came from? Well, it came from ATP. Okay? And then when you transfer the phosphate onto this position right here, you get out ADP. All right. Now, one thing I want to uh, talk to you about very quickly has to do with the next enzyme, which I'll go ahead and say is termed aldolase. You've probably heard since general biology, maybe anatomy and physiology depending on the curriculum, that glycolysis takes one six-carbon sugar and breaks it into two three-carbon sugars. And up until biochem, you probably haven't known why it does that or how, but aldolase, this next enzyme, this is the enzyme that does this. This is the enzyme that breaks the six-carbon sugar into three or two three-carbon fragments, okay? Because this molecule right here, you don't really need to know the name of it, but fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, this is six carbons, okay? So we're going to do a little bit of detail on aldolase because it's a, actually a kind of an important enzyme here. Okay, so let's talk about it. The first activity of aldolase, I'll go ahead and read this right here because I went ahead and wrote this. Aldolase has two important activities. The first is to open the ring, just termed a ring opening reaction. So up until this point, all these structures that you've seen before, they're all in their cyclic form and that's the only way they exist in this pathway. Aldolase uses, or it, it opens the ring through the anomeric carbon, that's a misprint there, but it suffices that it uses the reactive nature of this anomeric carbon to open the ring into this linear form, okay? So the only way that the main reaction of aldolase, which is activity two, can proceed is when you have fructose, again, this molecule right here, this is still, this is still fructose 1, 6, bisphosphate, it's just in its linear form. The previous form was its cyclic form, so this is linear. The only way the main activity, the second one of aldolase, can proceed is with this molecule in its linear form. So first activity, open up the ring. And this I've drawn it in the Fisher projection form, but you can draw it any way you want. Okay. The second activity is its cleavage of, of the six carbon fragment. This is actually the step right here. This is the step where you break the six carbon sugar into two three carbon fragments. So let me read this. Aldolase's second activity is to split the six carbon sugar into two three carbon fragments, termed G3P and DHAP. G3P stands for glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, DHAP stands for dihydroxyacetone phosphate, but you can abbreviate those. Note that these two products are different. Okay, it breaks it into two different products. And the reaction is termed a retroaldol addition, in case you are wondering. So what you've heard since gen bio, anatomy and physiology, cell bio, etc., that glycolysis splits a six-carbon sugar into two three-carbon sugars, this is directly accomplished by aldolase. This is the enzyme that does what you've heard up in even maybe since high school. Okay? So if you really wanted to look at what the structure is, how they're normally drawn, they're drawn like this one, which this one happens to be... Um, glycerol, this one happens to be, excuse me, this is dihydroxyacetone phosphate right here. And this one, which is the most important, as we'll talk about in a minute, called glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate or G3P. Okay? Now, DHAP, in terms of glycolysis, is useless. It can't proceed in that form. So there's another, another enzyme called triose phosphate isomerase which literally takes DHAP and converts it into G3P. So if you have one glucose that's six carbons, it's going to split it initially into two different three carbon fragments, DHAP and G3P, but ultimately the DHAP will get converted to G3P because DHAP is useless. So in other words, per one glucose, we'll have two G3Ps at the end of this. If I have 100 glucoses, I'll have 200 G3Ps. So however, however many glucoses you put into glycolysis, just double that, and that number is the number of G3Ps. 
ultimately because of this enzyme right here, triose phosphate isomerase. Okay? And the G3Ps, we're not going to finish that in this video, but I will say that the G3P continues into what we call the payoff phase of glycolysis, and that's going to be covered in the next video. Now before we conclude this video, it's really important to look at some test type of questions that we can ask. All right. Number one, how many carbon atoms do each of the molecules that is glucose through fructose 1,6-bisphosphate have? That's all the enzymes prior to aldolase. Remember, aldolase is the splitting enzyme. So how many carbons do those have? Well, those all have six carbons. That's the thing that you've heard about since you were in Gen Bio. Okay? They all have six carbons. So number two, what is that really important facet of aldolase that you have heard about since Gen Bio? Well, aldolase directly is the enzyme that splits the six carbon sugar, in this case it happens to be glucose, into two three carbon fragments that happen to be different from each other. Okay? So number three, that's going to lead us into this. Aldolase, or in general we say glycolysis, takes a six carbon sugar called, and that is glucose, which I'll abbreviate, and splits it into two blank carbon fragments. Well, it's going to split it into two three carbon fragments. The fragment for number three that continues into the payoff phase of glycolysis is what? Well, did we say DHAP continues? No, it has to get converted into G3P to be useful. This is our useful molecule, G3P, so that's what I'm going to put in this blank. The fragment from number three that continues into the payoff phase of glycolysis is called G3P, or in reality it's called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. All right. Does the investment phase of glycolysis, this is what we just talked about, yield energy or does it consume, i.e. burn energy? And by energy I mean things like ATP or NADH. Well, if you go back and look at the pathway, did we actually get any ATP out of it? No. In step one hexokinase, we had to burn an ATP, in other words, consume it. We didn't get it out. Instead, we got out an ADP. That doesn't help us. We had to put in the ATP, so we consumed that. And then in PFK1, step three, we had to burn another ATP. So whenever I say we burn an ATP, that's a, that's a typical way of talking about this. Um, it's sort of slang in biochemistry. Burn ATP means it's a loss. Okay, You lost that ATP because you had to use it. Okay, So does it do we yield energy or consume it? The answer is we consume or burn it. And specifically, for number six, what is the net gain or loss of energy from the investment phase? We lost two ATP. We lost two ATP. Now, I haven't explained this yet, but that seems bad. But it turns out in the payoff phase, the last half of this pathway, we're going to more than make up for that loss of two ATP we're actually going to get four ATPs out of the payoff phase plus uh, two NADHs, as we'll find. Okay? There's no NADH that we deal with in this part of the pathway. That's the second part. Oh, here's a question. Where in the eukaryotic cell does glycolysis occur? Glycolysis only occurs in the cytosol or cytoplasm does not occur in the mitochondria, it does not occur in organelles, it only occurs in the cytosol. Very important point. Okay? And then number eight, this is kind of a thinking type of question. Glycolysis can actually catabolize other sugars as well, but generally they have to have six carbon atoms. Which of the following sugars might be catabolized through this pathway? Well, so we're really determining which ones have six carbons, and then those are the ones that will get catabolized through glycolysis. Now, it's not exactly the same pathway. They're going to enter at different points, but they do get broken down through this pathway. So what about fructose? Does that get catabolized through glycolysis? The answer is yes, because fructose has six carbons. What about ribose? Ribose would not, because ribose has five carbons. Ribose, along with deoxyribose, which is also in this list, they have a separate pathway for their, uh, for their uh, catabolism. What about galactose? Galactose is also a six carbon sugar. That one will get catabolized through this pathway. What about xylose? Well, xylose, also like xylulose, those are both five carbon sugars. They do not get catabolized this way. And that is the same for ribulose, which is the derivative of ribose. Ribulose is also a five carbon sugar. In fact, xylose and xylulose, ribulose, ribose 
One of their pathways for catabolism is actually the pentose phosphate pathway, which is another uh, pathway we'll discuss in another playlist. And finally, mannose. What about mannose? The answer is yes, mannose is a six carbon sugar that can get catabolized through glycolysis, and we cover that in other videos. Okay? So those are some really important thinking questions about glycolysis, specifically the investment phase. In the next video, we're going to cover the payoff phase, and we're going to compare and contrast it to this phase. As we said, in the preparatory slash investment phase, we had to burn 2 ATP. That means we lost 2 ATP. But as it turns out, we're going to totally and more than make up for that loss in the next uh, few reactions in the next video. So make sure to like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. I hope this helped. See you soon.